do a bit of a boat tour. So we're in the cockpit at the moment. We've got this um, half pilot house, which is very nice if you're sailing in the wind and rain. And then we've got this cover at the back that we have on, well, when it's been raining, it's very nice at the moment, we need to take it off really. Um, we take it off when we're sailing. So then down here we've got the aft cabin, which is where we sleep. Really, really nice big bed, so we can sleep one down each side like that. Or if we are sailing and we're on a whatever tack we're on, we can sleep across ways. So I go in the small bit and Ben's there. Um, lots of storage as well, so all of these cupboards in here and one of my favourite parts of the boat a built in dressing table slash jewellery box it keeps all my junk tidy very dirty windows, no cleaning space for books and things at the back um, and then there's loads and loads of space under the beds as well which is quite useful. Goes all the way back and you can lift all the beds up and stuff stuff in there. Nice wardrobe here with all my stuff in. Lots of space. And then behind me here we've got the aft heads. Nice to have two heads on the boat. So again loads of storage in here. Pretty Nice size, really. And then back up to the cockpit. These lockers under here are massive. I'm sure I'll go in this one, it's a bit easier. Loads and loads of room. So that goes down about three or four foot. Same on the other side. So what you might lose in quarter berth, oops, you gain in storage. Another one under there. And down into the main living area. So, loads of storage under the seats. Um, we sort of keep our food, well, some of our dry goods in there. And then we've got more sort of cupboards around this side. So we've got condiments and bits of bobs in there bread and things down in this one, up here is plates and crockery and cutlery and stuff, so quite a lot of room considering, you know, it's a pretty small galley, and loads of storage room in the steps, so that's really good for bottles and booze and things like that. And then we've got another heads here. Another locker here which has got, well, spare sails in at the moment and toilet rolls. <laughs> and then we've got a shower as well, I'm very lucky to have a shower so um, you just pull the little thing across and then shower and then it just drains straight into the floor and you pump it out with this. Um, behind here, another big locker which is a really good size and we just use it for our wet weather gear really and sort of spare pillows and things like that. And this is the four peak which is a bit of a dumping ground. Um, we, well when we've got guests we clear it out but at the moment it's just used for the folding bike and there's spare sails and things and spare life jackets under the, under the beds. Um, that's the anchor chain locker. Um, yeah, so pretty much it really. Big enough for us, isn't it? What's the square footage living space? Don't know, I haven't worked it out. Oh. A lot smaller than a 40 foot boat of, yeah. of recent years. It's quite narrow, isn't it? 3.5 metres wide, yeah. the widest point. Um, but because it's split into an extra cabin with the aft cabin space, mm. you lose a massive amount of saloon space. Yeah. But for two people, it's fine. Yeah. I think it's fine for guests for 
Uh, yeah, a long weekend or a week with guests is great, but any longer I'm not sure how we'd all fit in because this does turn into another bunk, but the fiddles on the table have been a bit of a problem. We need to make up a new um, cushion for it. But uh, otherwise it's a massive double. Yeah. So, got a little fridge here, which is kind of big enough just for us two really. Um, with a little freezer bit, but it just defrosts and leaks all over the floor really, so we don't really use it. Um, and then under this seat, we actually do have a kind of cool box and a freezer. However, it's wearing our batteries down a lot, so we're not using it at the moment. Um, so we're just using it as sort of extra storage, and then I put a couple of ice blocks in there every now and again and keep it cool. Um, behind here, we've got all our sort of gas switch off and bits and bobs like that. Um, and then the nav station here, of all our charts and bits and bobs. Now we try and keep it tidy, but it doesn't always always work. And then to tell whether our tanks are full, so this deck has got markings on it, which are each a hundred. Um, litres. So you just stick that in the hole and whatever it says when it comes out. So that's one 200 and, well 70 litres. And then once the tank's full um, we've got a sort of system in the tap so it's a UV filter which is on the on the cold water pipe so it kills any bacteria. So what we do is we set it up on our inverter switch. So you have to turn the inverter on, which it is because I've just used it. And then you, we turn another switch on down here. So that's on at the moment. And then you will then rigged up a little light. So you check that this little green light here is on. And then you know that the filter is all working and set up. And then when you run the water through the cold tap, it goes through the UV filter and sterilises it. So no bugs, no nasties, and we don't get ill. So I thought I'd just show you what's actually um, inside the locker. Got generator and stuff. See there. Again, pretty, it's pretty old, but it does still work. It seizes up every time we put it in storage. But it, if we unseize it, it seems to work again for the season. Underneath here, with this is the old battery boxes. Um, so we've got two 12 volt batteries in there, which are our starter. They're the starter batteries for the engine, and then there's four 6 volt batteries in one string in there which is the old domestic battery bank. Um, also in there it's got a um, blown air heating system up there with all the ducting running to it and um, right round the corner that way is the hydraulic um, pilot and a, and a fuel tank for the generator. It's like a day tank for the generator. So I spent a lot of time in there, all cooped up. Okay, so in here, these are the two new battery boxes I've just fitted, and this is this is for our Atlantic crossing. Um, there's another four um, six volt Trojan batteries in one string on that side, but they're joined together in in parallel with the other ones. So we've got two strings of four batteries making our 24 volt system, which is the, the, for the domestic supply. Um, and that is enough, to, well hopefully enough, to run the autopilot all night, every night, if we need it. Um, I haven't mentioned, we've got two autopilots. We've got an old one, which runs an electric motor on a clutch, um, which actually then drives the wheel and drives the hydraulic, manual hydraulic pump on the back of the wheel. Um, and then I've added one, which is the, the hydraulic one in there, which just is electric um, hydraulic pump, which just forces the fluid up and down. So if one fails, we've got the other one. But that was by far cheaper to add the extra batteries um, and the second autopilot system than it was to get a wind vane self steering system for this boat because it's because it's centre cockpit and it's hydraulic steering. Everyone we spoke to says, "Oh, you know what you want is a hydro vane." Um, they make one that will do that job really well, and then we looked into even buying a second hand one was going to be about £5,000. <laughs> so that's massively out of budget. I mean, you know, well, I think in the end we spent about £2,000 on getting set up the way we are, so that was three grand cheaper. 
So this is on deck. Um, got our windlass at the front there, which is covered up at the moment with my nice homemade, homemade cover. So that's in there. Spare anchor. We've got a rockler anchor on the front, which was a new addition after we lost our old one. And so, do you want to talk us through the solar panels and what power we've got? Yeah, so we've got two old, like, two old flexible panels on the cabin roof there, and they they're not they're about 25 watts each, um, and they they trip and charge the um, start battery bank. Um, they don't really produce very much power, but you can walk on them, and they keep the, the start batteries topped up nicely, so they work quite well for that. Then we've got two 245 watt Panasonic panels, which are actually off the small ones off a house. Um, we need you, we need two because of the shade that the rigging for the mizzen mast creates. So effectively, no matter where you are or what you're doing, you never get more than one panel in open sun. And the other panel um, will be slightly shaded. Um, if you had a sloop rig boat without a mizzen mast um, and, and an arch on the back with a, you know, with your panels on that, two would definitely be enough, more than enough. Uh, you might even manage with just one, I reckon. But um, it's this this situation with the mizzen mast. It's very difficult to find any area to put a solar panel that doesn't have shade on it at some point. Um, we are actually going to add a third one, which is going to go over the top of the. Um, the rear section of the pilot house here it will sit above the canvas but under the boom um, on two poles that go down in a frame extending over the top and then um, we'll have to try and thread the, the hood in underneath it would be a little bit awkward fitting the hood but um, I think with the, with the three that'll be enough with, and then with the, the extra batteries now um, it makes us a bit heavier I suppose but I don't think the extra four batteries in the panel is very much off the weight of a hydro vane sail steer steering system. They're pretty bulky, mm. solidly built things. Um, I would think they weigh probably 100 kilos or 80 kilos or something, and the batteries are about 100 kilos. So. Mm. It's 50-50. And I mean, the other thing is, once you've got the, you know enough power generating stuff, um, power generating capacity and batteries, then you know you don't need to plug in to shore power and you don't need to run the generator. I mean, very soon that generator will conk out and we'll remove it and then that'll be great because we're getting rid of something that weighs even more than the batteries and solar panels we fitted and it burns diesel so we you know we don't like using it anyway it's noisy um, and it keeps breaking down and I don't really like fixing it so, um, so that's that's what we're going to do with the solar panel situation so yeah that's it that's our little house our little floating home and we love it